morning church and yeah uh, you already saw the <laughs> the picture desperate for you that's my title for this sermon and um i i found that uh picture when i google because you know where i got this uh, title desperate for you is from that song we sang the breathe where we say uh, this is the air i breathe your presence your very presence this is my daily bread your very word and i asked the lord lord how can i um show it the, the desperation for you and then the lord reminded me of that incident when peter was walking on the water with the lord and then suddenly he was doing all right but then he saw the wind and the strong winds blowing the waves coming to him and he began to sink and then it says there in matthew 14 when he saw the wind he saw he forgot to look to jesus at first he was looking to jesus but then he saw something else he saw the wind he saw the wind he was afraid and beginning to sink cried out lord save me immediately in the picture immediately jesus reached out his hand and caught him you of little faith he said why did you doubt and you know in the times that we are in right now the spirit of doubt the spirit of unbelief is rising you know in milmeran last uh last time we were there joey is joey here nah oh there joey was counseling one of our youth and this boy considering that he is just a boy he shouldn't be bothered by so many things but this boy was um, fearful he was scared there's a spirit of fear that has overcome him and he was just telling sharing it to ate joey maybe because he heard of this coronavirus he heard of the volcanic eruption he heard of the earthquakes he heard of the the um sandstorm the hailstorm the drought and everything and it made him fearful to think that he is just a boy who is supposed to be in terms of strength he should be bold and courageous and stronger the the one that should be more peer, fearful are the adults because they know more but this little boy he was overcome by the spirit of fear and i believe because of ate joey he overcome that the counsel the wisdom that came through ate joey and so i was thinking lord in these times that we are in are we really desperate for you are we really saying lord without your presence i cannot breathe because your presence is the air i breathe that if you remove your presence lord breathing is an effort living is an effort without your word lord which is our daily bread lord we will not survive you know the daily bread expression means that it is the basic food by which one survives it is a staple food some countries the staple food is bread asians especially philippines what is the staple food rice we love rice and it's always a big portion in our daily diet rice we will not feel full without eating rice and so 
in the same token, our daily bread, the word of God, we will not be satisfied without taking the word of God. And as I sing that song, I'm desperate for you. I'm lost without you. The Lord is asking, really? Are you really desperate for me? Are you really lost without me? And the more I think about it, I'm saying, yes, Lord, I want to say yes. But my body is not in total agreement. Our bodies are quick to be drawn away from the Lord's presence. Very quick. We just come out from this place and get to our homes and we immediately look at the TV, the television set, and everything is like overtaken by the cares of this world. We watch the news, we, and then the joy of the Lord is gone and the anxiety and the heaviness comes in very quick, you know? The more I think about it, the Lord reveals that, no, darling, you have to be more desperate about me. You have to be more reaching to me. Your eyes draw away quickly to many things, cares of the world, television set, social media. Oops. Your body is being pulled by so many busyness, business. You're quickly tired. You're quickly uh, weary. Your lips are drawn so quickly to either tell lies or gossip or criticize. Your heart is quickly drawn to selfish ambitions, to what is comfortable. Your heart is full of gratification, self-gratification, of greed. Really, are you desperate for me? And so I said, Lord, I want to. I want to. And in the, the second page, it says there, the Lord continued to invite, come to me. If you are tired, you are weary, you are scared, come to me. Matthew 11, 28 to 29. Because when you come to me, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. In the message, it says, uh, take my yoke and learn from me. Watch me, how I do it. Come to me. Watch me, how I do it. Learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. And again, there is that statement by the Lord again, Jesus himself. This is from the episode where Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane and he was about to be arrested and his heart is full of burden. Why? Because he's battling between the flesh, his flesh, and the spirit. In his flesh, in his body, he doesn't want the cup of suffering. And so when he prayed, he said, Father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering pass over me. But if it is your will that I take it, let your will be done. And when he prayed, he brought three disciples, Peter, James, and John, the inner circle, the closest among the twelve. And he said, okay, you stay here, I will go a little further and pray. But you watch and pray. And when he came back, what did he find? The disciples asleep. 
And then he said, Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. You know, at that point, it's not just the disciples' flesh is, is weak. It's even the Lord Jesus' flesh was weak. But because he was praying, his spirit overcame. And so, in the end, he said, Lord, let your will be done, not mine. Let your, your purpose override what is comfortable to me. If it is your will that I suffer, I take this cup, let your will be done. And so, the disciples, they are also struggling in their flesh. And the, the Lord says, watch, pray. Learn from me. You watch me. Pray. Because the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And so many Christians nowadays are falling to temptation. Because, no, the previous, because when you watch and pray, you will not fall into temptation. But because many Christians are not watching and praying. Many are falling to temptation. Watch and pray. Next, that is the alarm. The sounding of the alarm. The Lord is calling to us today, Christ Connect Church, watch and pray. Watch and pray. Those who have the ears to hear, let them hear. And who are those who have the ears to hear? They who receive the Spirit of the Lord. If you are a believer today, you have the Spirit of the Lord. You have the ears to hear. And it is you that the Lord is talking to. Watch and pray. There is a battle within us and outside of us. There is a battle. The battle of the flesh where our old ways are creeping in. No, you don't go to the prayer meeting. There is a good series starting today. Ano ba yung series ng Wednesday? Uh, uh, marriage at first sight? <laughs> There is that old self trying to creep in, battling between our spirit, the flesh. The battle outside of us is the world enticing us, attracting us, boasting of its riches, trying to attract our attention away from the Lord. The battle with the enemy of our faith, the devil, who is so skillful to steal from us, to kill us slowly, killing us softly, <laughs> to destroy us. The enemy came for three things, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And the more he is becoming stronger nowadays, do you believe so? As a result, believers are falling away. As a result, believers are asleep. Look at your neighbors. Is anyone asleep? <laughs> As a result, there is little evidence of power in their lives, in the lives of a believer. Little evidence of God's power working, moving in the lives of the church, in the lives of the families, in the neighborhood, in the school, in the workplace, in the communities. There is little evidence of God's power. Why? Because the church is falling asleep. That's why we need to sound the alarm. 
watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. There is this uh, demon-possessed boy who was brought to the disciples because Jesus wasn't there. And so, uh, Jesus, where was Jesus? In a mountain, and he was having a meeting with Moses and Elijah. And he brought again with him the three inner circle, Peter, James, and John. And so, how many disciples left? Twelve minus three, nine. <laughs> so, a demon-possessed boy and the father. The father brought the demon-possessed boy to the, the nine disciples. And they cannot drive the, the, demons, the demon away. And so, here comes Jesus coming back with Peter, James, and John. And he saw the commotion. And he said, what's happening? The father said, Lord, I brought this boy, my boy, to your disciples, but they cannot drive the demons out. Jesus said, oh, you of little faith, you generation of little faith, when, how long will I uh, endure with you? And so he talked to the spirit. He said, you spirit of mute, and death, because the boy cannot speak, the boy cannot hear. He just do whatever the spirit does to him. You deaf and mute spirit, come out of him. And the spirit left. And so, after a while, we followed the story. Mark chapter 9, verse 28 to 29. Afterwards, when Jesus arrived at the house, his disciples asked him in private, Why couldn't we cast out the demon? He answered them, This type of powerful spirit can only be cast out by fasting and prayer. And you know what? What we are dealing nowadays is a powerful spirit. Is a powerful spirit that can only be cast out not just by praying but by fasting. And so the alarm is sounded. Watch! Pray! And fast. Fast. Next. The Holy Spirit will empower us to pray. You know, the reason maybe why we are not praying is because we don't know what to pray for. We don't know how to pray. We don't know how to start. But you know what? Just start. Just start praying. Just come to the Lord and He will empower our praying. Amen? It is not us working. It is Him working in us. It is not our skillful words. No. It is Him enabling us to quicken our spirits, to pray. Because if it is us, then it will be just like our Father who art in heaven. It's like mindless. No? But with the Spirit, He quickens it. He makes the, the prayer sharper. You know, sometimes our prayers are dull. It's like it's just there in the ceiling. It doesn't go upper, uh, higher. <laughs> it gets stuck. We need the Spirit to empower us, to sharpen our prayer. Romans 8, verse 26. In a similar way, the Holy Spirit takes hold of us in our human frailty to empower us in our weakness. For example, at times, we don't even know how to pray or know the best thing to ask for. But the Holy Spirit rises up within, within us, to super intercede on our behalf 
pleading to God with emotional sighs too deep for words. That's a nice version. No? That's the passion version. Just in case you're wondering, it's a, not NIV, the passion. And it's really good. It's like, oh, wow, the spirit rises up within us. And you see that picture, something rising within you. And it's just super interceding for you. There is someone praying with you. And you just say, and the Lord already knows. That groan, when you just come to the Lord, Lord, I just want to come to you. He knows. Amen? Lord, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. Sounds like a song. <laughs> but he knows. Amen? And it is a promise. If you call to me, the Lord says, I will answer. Just call. And I will answer. And the great thing is, I will show you things unsearchable that you don't know. I will show you. Just call. Just call. Amen? Next. And so the call is to watch the Lord, learn from Him how He do it, and pray and fast. What is fasting, by the way? Fasting, as Pastor Pete told us yes, last week, fasting is the abstinence of food. For the purpose of losing weight, of getting healthy? No. For the pur spiritual purpose. For the purpose of seeking the Lord. For the purpose of spiritual health, not, not a physical health. It is not just skipping meals. It's also the intentional time to listen to God. Fasting helps us to be quiet. Be quiet. You know, the word fast in the original Hebrew, it means to cover one's mouth with one's hand. And that picture shows abstinence from food, preventing intake of food. Another picture of that is preventing outflow of words, right? That is fasting in the original Hebrew. And it's like saying, darling, listen, stop, be quiet. I want to speak, listen. It's during fasting that we get clearer instruction from the Lord. Become more clear. What is your will, Lord? And then he reveals his will. We understand the word better during fasting. Why? Because fasting is the posture of humility before the Lord, saying that, Lord, I need you more than food. I need your word more than food. I need you to strengthen me more than what food, how food strengthens me. It is a posture of self-denial and humility. And for, for sure, the Lord hearing his children saying, Lord, we need you. We need your presence. We need your Holy Spirit. We need your word. For sure, the Father will be happily, joyfully, willingly pour his presence. Amen? He will not give you a snake when you ask for a bread. When we ask for his Holy Spirit, for sure, 
he will give his Holy Spirit. During fasting, we fast to silence the voices that blurs the voice of the Lord. During fasting, we silence the spirit of fear, the spirit of unbelief, the spirit of anger, the spirit of anxiety and worry. During fasting, we say, Lord, strengthen me. I need you. And it's time to listen. Fasting is like putting an earphone to our ears, blocking the other noises around, and just tuned in to the Lord, the channel of heaven. Lord, what are you saying in this situation? Lord, what are you teaching me? Lord, show me your way. What is your will? No? Another. Fasting. Next. Fasting helps us see our true spiritual condition. As we tuned in to God, He will reveal to us our true condition. Things that we haven't surrendered. Things that is blocking the fellowship to the Father. Maybe there are things in our lives that we are uh, persistently doing and cannot surrender to the Lord. It is during fasting that the Lord will reveal to us what are those. And we turn and repent. We confess and we repent. Turn our backs from that thing that's hindering, blocking. You know what? We are children of God now, but sometimes because of our disobedience, our rebelliousness, our fellowship to the pa Father is hindered. Why? Because there is sin that you didn't confess to the Lord. It's like, I, I, I heard this illustration from Pastor David Jeremiah. You know, Pastor David Jeremiah. And he said one time when he was a youngster, he has uh, the father, his father has a very nice car that is not allowed for him to drive. But one day, the father wasn't there. He drove the car and he was just so happy to drive the car. But in the end, he got an accident. In short, the car was uh, maybe written off. And he went home not knowing how to face the father. And so when the father came home that night, saw the garage, saw the wreck, car and then saw David facing him whiteless uh, colorless not knowing what to say the father didn't say anything and he just walked away and just do the usual day for several days the father wasn't speaking to him until one day David, Pastor David Jeremiah, couldn't take it anymore. He went to his father and said, Father, Dad, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And then the father said, David, I forgive you, but you will pay for the car. <laughs> but you know what? During those times, they are, David was still a son. David was still a child of the father. But they are not in good terms. Why? There was a sin that's blocking the fellowship. Until David asked for forgiveness. And then the father said, it's all right, son. But you will have to suffer the consequence. You will have to pay for the car. 
And in the same way, as we fast, maybe the Lord will show to us things that's hindering the perfect fellowship between us and the Father. And it is time for us to confess and to say, sorry, Dad, sorry, Father. It says in Nehemiah 1, verse 4 to 7, this is the, the story behind this is uh, Nehemiah was a cupbearer to the king of Persia. And uh, the, the, a lot of Israel, the people of Israel were taken captive. And so they were in this place of uh, captivity. And Babylon has been overthrown by Persia. Nebuchadnezzar is no longer there. It was now King Art Artaxerxes, of the king of Persia. And here is Nehemiah, a cup bearer, the one who gives the cup of wine to the king. He is, he was a cup bearer. And so when he heard news from Jerusalem, from Judah, where he came from, a brother came over and visited him. And he said, how's things up in our hometown? Oh, so, so sad. Terrible news. Because the walls of Jerusalem are broken down, burned, tear down. Invaders are coming in and out. Raiders are coming in and out, and our people are being uh, abused. Now they are hungry. There is not much food. There is suffering. Let's follow the story. When I heard these things, I sat down and wept. For some days I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Then I said, Lord, the God of heaven, the great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commandments. Let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer your servant is praying before you day and night for your servants, the people of Israel. I confess the sins we Israelites including myself and my father's family, have committed against you. We have acted very wickedly towards you. We have not obeyed the commands, decrees, and laws you gave your servant, Moses. You see, Nehemiah was confessing the sin of Israel, and he is including himself and including his family into that confession. Because by right, no one has been faithfully obeying the commands of the Lord. And so Nehemiah confesses, God, I confess we have acted very wickedly toward you. We have not kept, we have not obeyed the commands. And then, there is that famous verse, Second Chronicles 7.14. It's actually a song. But next verse. Next. Oh, I didn't put there. Sorry. But it's a, it's a popular verse. Second Chronicles 7.14. If my people who are called by my name shall humble and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins. I will heal their land. Amen? And you know what? We are God's people called by his name. And we are called to humble and pray and seek the Lord and turn from our wicked ways in order for him 
to forgive us and heal the land. That is his promise. He will heal our broken land. The land of Australia, land of Philippines, of China, of America, of Iran, of Israel. He will heal our land. Amen. So next verse, uh, next uh, and last, fasting helps us become bold to stand on his word and obey. Because during fasting, we learn to be quiet and just listen and receive from the Lord. If he, re if he reveals us our sins, we confess. And if he reveals his instructions, we obey. We receive his word and faith rises. You know, faith comes by listening to the word of God. Faith comes when we listen and listen and listen to the word of God. And as we fast and receive the word, faith rises and as faith rises we become bold to do the work of the lord again in nehemiah when he fasted and said lord i confess to you the sin of israel our my sin my family sin we have acted very wickedly towards you the next part of his prayer is this nehemiah 1 verse 8 Remember the instruction you gave your servant Moses, saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and obey my commands, then even if your exiled people are at the farthest horizon, I will gather them from there and bring them to the place I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. They are your servants and your people, whom you redeemed by your great strength and your mighty hand. Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of this, your servant, and to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give your servant success today by granting him favor in the presence of this man. You see, Part of his prayer was he reminded the Lord, Lord, it is your promise that if we, if we are unfaithful, you will scatter us. But if we turn back and return to you, you will gather us back. You will gather us back. And so, Lord, give us, give me favor today. In the last part of that, that phrase, give your servant success today by granting him favor in the presence of this man. Who is this man? King Artaxerxes. Because he plans to approach the king with a request. And you know what is that request? It's quite out, outrageous, quite extravagant request. That if he didn't fasted and prayed before coming to the king, his life will be taken from him. Or he will be thrown to prison. Nehemiah chapter 2, you just go home and read the chapter 2. And it is there that he asked for the king to send him back, allow him to go back to Jerusalem and build the walls. And that in the process, he also need materials to build the walls. And in the process, king, also please, not just materials, give me a letter authorizing me, a letter from you authorizing me to do the work of building the wall. Why? Because these raiders, these, these 
uh, rebel uh, enemies that's just coming in and out of Jerusalem, once they see the letter, they know that if they mess up with me, they are messing with the king of Persia. And you know what? Even though it sounded so outrageous, that request, it was granted. And he was allowed to go back. And in less than two months, he built the walls of Jerusalem. Where did he start? The process all started in prayer and fasting. And so in our praying and fasting and watching the Lord, he will give us the boldness. Amen? Rise, the faith rising. And we will stand on that word and do the work. Of the Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, do we have a need so great today that we need prayer and fasting? Do we have? Probably within you, you know, yes, I need to pray and fast for my family. Yes, I need to pray and fast for my health. Yes, I need to pray and fast for our finances. The need is so great. I don't just need to pray. I need to fast and seek the Lord and receive instructions from the Lord. And another greatest thing, greatest need that we need in our churches today is revival. Revival, the fresh move of the Holy Spirit. And that song that we, it is a new song, but it's really, really powerful. Lord, we believe that you still raise bodies. Bodies are still raised. Giants are still slayed. Mountains are still moved. Strongholds are still loosed. God, we believe that wonders are still what you do. Amen? And God, we need a move. The move. We need your Holy Spirit. Amen? So in conclusion, we need the Lord's presence more than ever before. Probably we don't know who among us here have already been overtaken by a spirit of fear. We are just smiling outside, but we are sh shaking our knees inside. We don't know that one of us maybe are not able to go to sleep anymore at night because of the spirit of worry, the spirit of anxiety. These are spirits. And 2 Timothy 1, verse 7 says, We did not receive the spirit of fear. What did we receive? The spirit of power. The spirit of love. And of sound mind. Wisdom. The wisdom from the Lord. And so in conclusion, we need the Lord's presence more than ever before. Again, another song. I, I'm full of song in my mind. It says there, we need you, Lord, more than yesterday. More than words can say. We need you like never before. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. Amen? We need to watch and pray. We need to fast. We need to be quiet and tuned into his word. We need to confess our sins and turn away from them. And we need to receive his word and rise up in faith and boldly do the work he's calling us to do. Amen. Let's call the worship team.